What's going on, gardeners? It's Sunday, May 22nd, and we just got a nice little spring shower here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Now that the shower is over, I'm going to show you three things to do to your onion plants that they will absolutely love that I have learned over the years. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications, and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom-designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. On Onions are a foundational plant in the kitchen, and as such, I've really put a lot of effort into growing onions over the past few years. I've experimented with onion sets versus onion seed, and I have dramatically landed on growing onion seed is way better than growing onion sets. And I'll make sure to link to a video above that says exactly why I have arrived at this conclusion. However, it's more than just understanding whether you should grow onion sets or onion seeds. There is a technique to growing onions. They are different than most of our plants because most of the annual vegetables that we grow are actually fruiting plants, and an onion is not. We're actually eating the bulk so they have different rules and over the years I have tried to experiment with different types of planting and different types of techniques and I've arrived at a number of conclusions. In this bed right here I have an onion variety called Yellow Granex and Yellow Granex is a short day onion variety that does very well here in the southeast and I've been growing it for a couple of years these are all grown from seed. And in this bed right here, I'm running an experiment where I'm planting both the onions as single plantings and also as doubles and triples to see which is a better method of planting, standalone or in clusters. And as a result, I have developed myself a nice little control bed right here. And if you take a look at these onions right here, they're all doing very well. I'm extremely happy with the way that they're progressing. So take a good look at them. They're very good looking. I'm very happy Happy with them. Now we will compare them to another planting that I did in a very different way. Now I have my second onion bed, which is the same yellow granex that I grew from seed, and they were all part of the exact same tray of seedlings started at the exact same time. And I planted these interplanted with all of my pepper plants. And all of the onions, they go basically every other row with the peppers. And the results have been dramatically different. Just look at the monster size of the onions within this pepper bed. They are enormous. They are almost double the size, maybe more than double the size of the other standalone onion bed. They are just doing incredibly well. So what changed? Why are these onions so far ahead? Why are they so much larger comparatively than my other onion bed, which is doing pretty well in its own right? These onions right here are just absolutely enormous. So enormous that I've been trying to mess with the camera for the past 15 minutes to try and get an angle to show you just how big they are. And the camera just can't do it justice based on what you see in person. Now, after growing onions for a few years in my garden, there are three things that I've really noticed that really give onions a boost. And they had all three things in this bed where they didn't have all three things in the other bed. So I'm going to tell you exactly what they are right now. My first tip to growing large onions that do fantastically well for you is to interplant them with other plants, especially plants like tomatoes and peppers. For whatever reason, it seems that onions love being companion planted. And you'd think that maybe companion planting would maybe lead to competition and they wouldn't do as well. Well, that's why I think tomatoes and peppers are such good companions because they have very different root systems. The onion root system is a fairly shallow surface root system, whereas while tomatoes and peppers do have surface roots, the overall roots go much deeper. So they don't directly compete with each other. They make really good friends. And I've made uh, videos on companion planting or interplanting, which I will make sure to link to above because they give huge dividends. Not only do they look better, they simulate a polyculture and they're more space efficient, but alliums, which is the family that onions, garlic, leeks, and shallots are in, actually produce an odor that keeps pests away. So they have pest repellent properties. They're great friends with each other. I strongly recommend that you interplant your onions with sensitive with pest sensitive plants such as your tomatoes and peppers I've always had fantastic results doing so as you can see they are doing very well 
The second tip that I want to give you for growing onions that the onions absolutely love is a proper fertilizing regimen. Now, like I said earlier in the video, onions are very different from most annual vegetables that we grow. We usually grow, for the most part, either fruiting annual vegetables like tomatoes and peppers, or we grow leafy greens like lettuce, spinach, cabbage, kale, etc. And those two things need to be fertilized very differently. You, you generally give your leafy greens high nitrogen fertilizer all year because nitrogen will give leafy green growth. Whereas for your fruiting plants, the flower and fruit, like your tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, zucchini, they prefer a higher phosphorus fertilizer come their first blooms because the phosphorus helps give more flowering and more fruit set. Onions, however, are very different because they are a bit of a hybrid of each. When you first plant your onion seeds, they will grow into little grasses. So onions begin their life basically as a grass. So once your onions are large enough for transplant, you need to basically fertilize your onions like a grass. So your first few fertilizings are going to be largely nitrogen based. Things like blood meal are very good for young onions. Things like miracle Grow All-Purpose 24816, if you like to use soluble crystal, water-soluble fertilizers, uh, that's very good for onions when they are young. However, once you get good green top growth on your onions, you need to start backing off the nitrogen because if you keep giving them high nitrogen throughout the year, they will continue to put almost all of their energy into growing the onion tops instead of the onion bulbs. After you're done your high nitrogen regimen, you are going to want to switch fertilizing to a more balanced fertilizer or back off entirely. When I plant my onion transplants, I make sure to liberally apply a 555 organic fertilizer, which takes weeks if not months to break down in the soil. They are not immediately bioavailable, so they will fertilize for a long period of time. And every two weeks, I also like to toss a couple more handfuls of that 555 on my onion beds. And what I find is once you back off the nitrogen fertilizer, there's probably enough organic nutrients that are slow release and very balanced to assist in the bulbing. And since you won't have a high nitrogen feed, you will then encourage the onions to grow more roots and a larger bulb because they won't be putting all of that energy into the green tops like they were when they were initially establishing and growing more similarly to a grass. So I believe it's the restriction of the nitrogen before the onions start bulbing that is critical to get a beautiful bulb. And the third tip that I'm going to give you that your onions will absolutely love is something I discovered this year that is paying fantastic dividends. This time I ran drip irrigation in all of my beds in between all of the rows that had the onions. So here you can see drip line, there's emitters spaced every 12 inches. They are not only soaking my peppers down with water, but they are also soaking the onions down as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, onions have a very shallow root system. And while I have discovered that onions are very drought tolerant, because the roots are so shallow, they can't dig deep for water. So if you don't water your onions well, while they may not die, they won't get very large on you either. So because the root system is so shallow, you need to keep them well irrigated at all times if you want the best results. And that is what I believe is the key variable that is giving me such amazing results in the interplanted bed that I'm not seeing as amazingly in the standalone bed. This bed does not have any drip lines. And I think that excess of water, because that soil is so much better irrigated in the other bed, I think I'm seeing a dramatic increase in bulbing. And while these onions look fantastic, all of those other benefits in the other bed are starting to compound and I'm just getting runaway success with them in my pepper bed and I'm not seeing the dramatic level of success in my standalone bed. Now there is one other variable that I haven't accounted for that takes place in this bed that did not take place in this bed. And that is that because I planted my peppers in this bed, I gave an extra feeding or two of Jack's 202020 soluble fertilizer to these pepper rows that I did not give to these onions. Now these onions were planted a month, maybe even six weeks in advance of the pepper plants because the onions get planted well before the last frost date, whereas the pepper plants obviously get planted well after frost. I planted these pepper plants probably three weeks after my last frost date 
made, I was way behind schedule because we had a cold spring. So these onions really didn't get that many additional fertilizings. It wasn't more than, than a one or two, as I previously mentioned. Now, is one or two feedings of Jack's 2020 going to yield such large results, such a big size differential? I don't think so. I think it is all three or four of these things compacting and compounding on each other, and it's the compounding effects why I'm getting such great development here. It is the interplanting, it is the fertilizing technique, it is the drip irrigation, and a little bit of extra fertilizer that are all compounding and having a huge effect on these onions, and it's why I'm seeing such incredible results. But you know what? It's enough talking about how big these onions are. Let's actually pull one. Now, normally I wouldn't pull these until it's sometime in June because our longest days of the year haven't gotten here yet. So they still have a lot larger to get. But for the purposes of this video, there we go. Look at that beauty right there. And remember, there's still plenty more where that came from. I still really should have waited another full month to pick this. That's another month full of bulbing, and this wasn't even the largest one in there. So this is a perfectly uh, good supermarket quality onion, larger than most in the supermarket actually, and if I would have waited, it still would have been even larger. And it is those incredible results that I wanted to share for you so you can take them and apply them to your garden as well. And hopefully you will have the same amazing results that I'm having this season. Now, one thing I do want to tell you that, and I've covered this in other onion planting guides that I've made, one of which I will link to above so you understand, onions bulb based on day length. So you have to plant proper onion varieties in your unique zone. It's based on your latitude. You need to know if you're a long day, intermediate day, or short day latitude. So here in the southeast where I live, I grow short day onions. I could probably get away with some intermediate varieties. So if you don't grow the right onion type for your unique location, nothing you do is going to work out for you. If you're a long day climate and you grow short day onions, not going to work. If you're a short day climate and you grow long day onions, not gonna work. The day lengths will never match properly for the proper bulbing. So always make sure you do your research. It's not as simple as just buying a random packet of seed off of the shelf at Home Depot. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use for real in my garden, I have them all linked down in my Amazon storefront down in the video description. So check that out if you want to see the products that I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my Spreadshop link for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. It is a beautiful day here in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. We're in Duck, and I have my best buddy right there, Mr. Dale, enjoying this beautiful day in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Hey, Dale, say hi to everybody. You're looking very handsome, enjoying your shade under the umbrella. Well, he's enthralled by all the breaking waves. It is just gorgeous out.